Okay, this is exercise 3.6, question 19. Find the area bound by the curve y equals the square root of 4 minus x squared, the x-axis and the y-axis in quadrant 1. Whenever you see these y equals square root of x, if you see a graph like this, either y equals square root of x or y equals something like form a minus x squared or something like that, it's either going to be half a parabola or half of a circle. Now, to be able to tell which one it is, you square both sides. So you'll look at it and you'll say, I'm not sure if that's half a circle, semicircle or half a parabola. So what you do, you square both sides to see where did this come from. And what do you get if you square both sides? Y squared is 4 minus X squared. Taking the X squared over, you get X squared plus Y squared is 4. Isn't this a circle radius? Two centre zero zero. Okay, so you give it a sketch. Now you cannot, right, you cannot integrate this. We can only do integrals of this format. Ax plus b, integral of ax plus b to the power of n. Not ax squared plus b to the power of n. Nothing like that. So you cannot integrate quadra quadratics with square roots or quadratics with powers. Quadratics with powers you cannot integrate, only linear functions with powers. So, for example, if I asked you to integrate that, you cannot do it. We do not have an integral for that. We cannot integrate this. It, it is not of this form. So, cannot integrate this by normal methods. There are actually three unit methods of integrating it, but you can't do it by two unit methods. So, cannot integrate this. It is not of the form ax plus b to the power of n. It's ax squared to the power of n. It, it's okay, the problem is not the half here, okay? Actually, it sort of is, because if it was a squared, you could have expanded it, you know? So, but I suppose the problem is the half there then. Okay, so what you do, you cannot use this. It's not in that form. They're not equal, okay? They're not in that form. So, therefore, what you've got is a circle with centre 0, 0, radius 2. And you just want it in the first quadrant. So therefore, how do you find the area? Pi r squared on 4. Okay, so it's pi times 2 squared on 4. Is it just pi? Pi units squared. Okay, so please don't make that mistake with that type of function. Okay, so they just wanted it in the first quadrant. Let's say they didn't want it just in the first quadrant. It would have been the semicircle on top of the x-axis because it's y equals positive square root of 4 minus x squared. If it was the negative square root of 4 minus x squared, it would have been down there. Okay, so up here is y is the positive square root of 4 minus x squared. Down here, you would have had y equals the negative square root of 4 minus x squared, okay? All right, <clears throat> I'll explain why. All right, even functions such as this, y equals x squared. Um, you might want to find the area, as I was doing before, underneath the curve from negative 2 to positive 2. There are two ways of doing this. The area is either the integral from 2 to negative 2, let's say this is the curve y equals x squared, of x squared dx. Are you okay with that, to do that area be below that curve? Now, there's another way to do this. See, isn't area 1 here, this area here on the right, the same size as the area on the left? Because the function is symmetrical, because it's an even function. So even functions are symmetrical about the y-axis, meaning that if you fold them in half, the left-hand side of the graph sits directly on top of the right-hand side of the graph. So we can say that this areas, these areas on the left and right are the same size. So to save substituting numbers, such as 2 twice, I mean this obviously isn't a hard one to substitute, it's the same as doing 2 times the area from 2 to 0. Do you get that? Now that's what that process is all about. So now with odd functions, yes you know that for example with y equals x cubed, it's got symmetry but different type of symmetry, it's got point symmetry. So yes, let's say from 2 to negative 2 of this one as well, the, this area is the same size as this area, but if you do integrals 
this area will come out as a positive answer and this area is below the x-axis, it'll come out as a negative area. So there are two ways of doing this. You can say that the area bounded by the curve and the x-axis is, you have to break it up. You cannot do from 2 to negative 2. If you do from 2 to negative 2, this is incorrect because you will get 0. If you did that, you will get 0 and that is not what the area is. That's the answer for the integral. So if they ask you for the integral, you just do from 2 to negative 2 for the integral. If they don't put it in the context of an area type question, you just do the normal integration. You don't worry or think about areas. But if you're asked for the area, you can do from 2 to 0 of, well, I'll just show you three ways of doing this. 2 to 0, you'll get a positive answer, won't you? And from 0 to negative 2, you'll get a negative answer, won't you? So what you do with the negative one is you do the absolute value of that second one. But instead of doing that, we know that the areas are the same size. You could just do 2 times the function from 2 to 0. Because, all right, let's work out what we actually get. The integral of x cubed is x squared, x4 on 4. Do you know what I mean? And when you substitute in the 2 and 0, what do you get? 16, you get 4. In other words, if I do this first integration, I'll get 4. If I do this one, what do I get? Negative 4, and so I take the absolute value. So I'll get 4, and the absolute value of negative 4 is 4, so it's 4 plus 4 is 8. The quickest way to do it is to say this is an odd function. It has point symmetry or rotational symmetry. Only if they're asking from the same value on this side to the same value on that side and only if it's got symmetry about the origin. It has to be about the origin. Wait a sec. If it's x cubed plus 2, it's shifted over. If it's x, no, it's not. It's shifted up and I wouldn't be using it then. It, look, the thing, the important thing is that you sketch it. You do not just use it with any x cubed function, okay? The important thing is that you sketch it. And by sketching it, if you know that those two areas are the same, that's when you use the 2. If by sketching it, it's been shifted up or down, you may not be able to use the 2. Do you get, I'm going to give you an example. Yes. Sorry? Yeah, it's the same for this one because you've drawn it. The important thing is that you draw these functions. Once you've done y equals um, x minus 1 squared, it may not be... Like, oh, I can do another one. So this is going to be 2 times 4 by the time you integrate it. Do you know what I mean? And you'll get 8 units squared. But the thing is, the key is to draw it. You should not be doing any area question without drawing. Okay? Um, they should be giving you something that you should be able to draw. Okay? All right? And that's, this is where that, that topic on functions comes in, all right? That, the one that we did earlier in the year. You know, you know how we learnt the functions topic and how to draw all the different functions? This is where you use it. They're not going to just, they might ask you a domain and range question, but, but often if it's an area question, they've sketched it for you. Like, okay? All right. Rise, it's much, much easier. Look, girls. All right, this is question 8 from exercise 3.7 to, to find the area bound by this curve and the y-axis. So find the area bound by... Yes, it's a sideways parabola. So normally you're used to parabolas being y equals x squared upwards, y equals negative x squared downwards. When the x and y's are swapped, you know what I mean? Um, the positive y squared type is, so this is the positive y, x is positive y squared type goes that way, and x is negative y squared type goes that way. Okay? Now, obviously, this is shifted up and down or whatever. That's just the general shape. So, because of the negative, I really don't like factorizing negative quadratics. So, you're best off pulling the negative out. What do I do now? If I pull the negative out, what do I get? Plus 5y plus 6. 
it's negative y plus 3y plus 2. So the so it's negative 3, negative 2. So and it goes that way. Okay? So we've got negative 2, negative 3. Alright, it's not to scale. And it goes that way. And it passes through. So you want the area bound by this curve in the y-axis. So the, the values that you're going to substitute in are negative 3 and negative 2. But you must do the negative 2 on top of the integral. Whoops, I'm off screen. Okay. So the ne pull the negative out when you're factorising negative quadratics. Okay? That way you know it's that way because of that type. So therefore the area is going to be the integral. Please put the negative 2 first because it's, it's bigger than negative 3. Otherwise you get a negative answer. Yes? That way. Under here. Because it's that type, it's that type and it cuts at negative 3 and negative 2. Now the only way you can get it to cut is to draw, it's a sideways parabola. Yeah. Alright, so negative 3 to negative 2, you still put the negative y squared minus 5y, I would not put the negative out the front here probably. Either you put it out the front and keep it there, actually you could. Did you then keep the negative out the front? Because there is nothing worse than substituting a whole bunch of negatives. So I would, if I were you, put the negative out the front because now where you actually put it, I'll show you where to put it. Oops. Plus, like that. So what I would do is stick the negative right out the front. It's the same thing. Do you see what I'm doing? Girls, I'm telling you now, do not substitute negatives and then minus more negatives. You may make a mistake. All right? You've got to learn to be comfortable with this. You can pull the negative out. And then you can pull it, next time you pull it straight out to the front first go. Then it's got nothing to do with that integration and you just put it in front of your answer. That one there with the negative there is the same as putting the negative out the front. Same thing. Okay? So you've got y cubed on 3 plus 5y squared on 2 plus 6y between the values of negative 2 and negative 3. And then you do your substitution, keep the negative there. Oh, I need more room. So you pull the negative right out the front, do your first substitution, take away your second substitution, but you're going to need a negative out the front and have fun. Negative 2 into, you know what, actually, I'm silly. I should have kept them because then they would have all cancelled. Yeah. Sorry. You know what, keep them negative. You know, because, oh, well, not, it doesn't matter. You know why? Because you've got, you've got odd powers there and you've got an odd power there and when you put the negative, that's going to be negative. So if I actually kept the negative, it would have been positive. And this one will be positive, this will be the only negative one. So sorry about that. But you know, who's looking at powers before you start the integration? So you may as well just leave it the way it was and do the substitution. It doesn't matter which way. Often you'd pull the negative out, but, but it just happens that we've ended up with mostly odd powers, okay? Do I need to um, do this or you're okay? I'm sure you can substitute, okay? All right. So you could have either pulled the negative out or actually leaving it there in hindsight probably was the best thing to do. We want the area enclosed by y equals 4, y equals 1 minus x in quadrant 2. Okay. In area enclosed by the line y equals 4, y equals 1 minus x in quadrant 2. For a start, girls y equals 1 minus x is not the way I want that function looking. It needs to be x equals something y when you're integrating or finding areas with respect to the y-axis. So when you were first introduced to integration, it's y equals something x squared, whatever, y equals x, 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 and then you substitute in your x values. When you integrate with respect to the y-axis, your equation is not in the form y equals something anymore. It's got to be in the form x equals something. Everything's in reverse now when you're integrating with respect to the y-axis. So first let's just, you can sketch it if you want, 
Um, oh, you have to, of course. Y equals 4 is here. Y equals 1 minus X. I can sketch it in that format, actually. I'll just do some substitution. When X is 0, Y is 1. And when X is, when Y is 4, I may as well find out where it hits up here. When Y is 4, I think it's negative 5. 1 minus X, negative gradient for a start. All right, when Y is, you can just choose some values. When um, X is negative 2, Y is 3, isn't it? When X is negative 5, I think, isn't it when X is negative 5? No, it's not. It's not 4. What's wrong with it? It's negative 3. When X is negative 3, Y is 4. All right, so this is what it looks like. This, when X is negative 3, what you can do, sub Y equals 4 in there, and you get 4 is... Do you know why I'm subbing Y equals 4? I want to see where this point is. And then you get um, X is 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. So this is what I've got. This is my line. Now, you don't even have to use integration if you don't want. I just do area of a triangle. Find the area enclosed by the lines. Y equals 4. Y equals 1 minus X in quadrant 2. They want this area. But we can. I'm going to do this two ways. I'm going to do it with an area formula, and I'm going to do it with an integral. Okay? So first way with an area formula is what? Using just area of a triangle. Area is half times base times height. How would we do that shaded area? Gloria. Half times four. No, what's this distance? Oh, three. Times? Four. No. That's, three. That's three. negative three, four. Oh, okay. This is the point. Three. Yeah, but it's area. That's just a distance. Remember, all distances are positive. So the area, what's this length and what's that length? Good. Half of 3 times 3, which is um, y equals 1 minus x. I'm just sketching that curve. So this is the line y equals 1 minus x. So one way of doing this is to sketch it. You can see how important functions are and knowing how to graph your functions. Half, I'm um, using just area formula only. That distance is 3 and so is that one. So 4.5 units squared. Now, if I want to do it by integration, I'm not allowed to use the function y equals 1 minus x. I have to change it and make x the subject. So x is 1 minus y. So the area will be the integral from which values? 4 to 1. So we want, so you know, you can sort of turn it sideways. Pretend that's the x-axis now. Do you know what I mean? You're doing between the values of 4 and 1 underneath this curve, touching the axis. So area is integral from 4 to 1 of 1 minus y dy. When you're integrating with respect to y, you write dy, not dx. In other words, I'm integrating with respect to y and substituting in y values. That's what the dy is telling me. So you get y minus y squared between the values of 4 and 1. y minus y squared on 2. Because I need the area bound by the y. How else do you find this area? It's, this area is the area bound because you have to put in y values, not x values, when you're doing area with respect to y axis. The equation I'm using has to have x as the subject. You know how we're used to y equals y equals when we're integrating with respect to the x axis? We get y equals something x, and then we integrate with respect to x. Here we're integrating with respect to y, so your function has to have all y values only. Girls, do you see this or not? That that we're integrating with respect to our curve, we want the area under the curve that's bound by the y-axis. And then we get 4 minus 8 
minus 1 minus a half, I think. Now, oh. But why do we need to do abs? Oh, yeah, because it's on the negative side. Yeah. It's on the negative side. See, these are the positive x values and the negative x values, so you need to do absolute value. So the area will be the absolute value. Because if you turn it sideways, these are considered the negatives. Like, you know, you go like this. There's your positive x values. So it is below. And so we get absolute value of negative 4 minus a half Absolute value of negative four and a half, which is 4.5 units squared. So two ways of doing it, and which is the easier way? The area one. So please, you can resort, you don't have to use integrals. All right? Often, some of these questions can be done quite easily with trapeziums, trapezia, triangles, circles. Okay? Pain. X is Y bracket, Y minus 2. It's got Y intercepts of 0 and 2. It's a sideways parabola looking like that. Give it a sketch. The um, area is going to be negative because if you turn your page around, the area is going to be under that X axis, a uh, Y axis, sorry. So therefore, um, you'll do absolute value of integral between 2 and 0. Question 15, they want the area bounded by the curve Y equals X to the power of 4 plus 1 the y-axis, and the lines y equals 1 and y equals 3. Oh, did you need the question before? Or oh, you're okay. All right, for question 15, you want the area bounded by that curve, y equals x squared plus 1, eh, sorry, x to the power of 4 plus 1, the y-axis, and the lines y equals 1 and y equals 3. Now, y equals x to the power of 4 plus 1, just do some substitution. I've started it. When x is 0, what's y? One. When x is 1, what's y? When x is 2, what's 1? What's y? Something big. Right. When x is negative 1, what's negative 1? Two, good. It's symmetrical, by the way. And negative two will give you the same answer as positive two. That's the graph. Now, not all x to the power of fours are a w. They're a w if it's x to the four plus x cubed plus x squared plus x. If it's plus other x's, it will be the w. What do you mean by plus other x? Like x plus x cubed plus x? Yes. It can be, it could even be x4 plus, yeah, x squared plus, you don't have to have each of the other powers. Once you've got some of the other powers, it's more than likely going to be a w. Okay, but if it's just x to the power of 4, it is the same shape as x squared, just a lot steeper. Okay? All right. So that's the curve. You want the area bounded by that curve, the y-axis, and the lines y equals 1 and y equals 3. Which quadrant? In quadrant 1. So here, that's what we want. We got a bit of a problem. Oh, you're just going to get a negative answer. Same, just here. If it's quadrant 2, you just shade here. So... We don't want the... All right, there's a few ways. All right, let's, let's get started on this because we're going to get stuck and I'm going to show you what to do when you get stuck. So if you're integrating with respect to the y-axis, do we want the graph in this form? How can I do x4 plus 1 dy? You can't. x to the power of 4 plus 1 dy, you can't do it. So you've got to make x the subject, but we're still going to have a problem. One sec. Take the one over. You okay with that? So therefore, x is the fourth root of y minus 1. Oh, no, we can do it. So x is y minus 1 to the power of a quarter. Wait. 
Isn't the rule that you can integrate AX plus B to the power of N? Isn't this just like, it's just like X minus 1 to the something? All right, we're integrating with respect to Y, but this is okay. Provided this is not a Y squared, you can do this. Do you get, you okay with that? So, you need to sketch it. No, too hard to sketch that one. Yeah, girls, you can sketch either of them. They are the same graph. So don't rearrange it and try to sketch this one down here. It'll be a nightmare. You recognise this form. You sketch the form that you recognise. They are the same curve. All right, so you, you sketch the form that you recognise. Then you rearrange it. And so area will be the integral from 3 to 1 of y minus 1 to the quarter dy. Notice you're integrating with respect to the y-axis. That's what the dy is for. Also, these values here must be y's and not x's. Okay? So, therefore, you will get, what's the rule? Increase the power by 1. So, you get 5 on 4. Divided by 5 on 4 means put 4 on 5 out the front. And... Okay, all right, actually I'll do it the long way, over 5 on 4, and then don't you times it by the coefficient, let's just keep it like that first, and now we'll fix it, which is 4 fifths, y minus 1, girls, can you please write it, I don't know if you want to do 5 on 4 in your calculator, but if it was me, I, I don't like using the calculator for this stuff, that is the fourth root isn't it the fourth root of y minus 1 to the 5? Oh, you probably can't even read what I've written. I'll fix it up. Four fifths. And it's going to be the fourth root of y minus 1 to the power of 5 between the values of 3 and 1. Are you okay with that? All right. You know what? Let's take this four fifths out the front. You don't need to substitute it twice. So four fifths times. Let's do our substitution. When you put 3 in, you get 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 to the power of 5. Oh, that's 32, the fourth root of 32. Are we going to get a decimal? Then do what you want. Fourth root of 32 minus, put the 1 in, you get 0, don't you? 1 minus 0 is 0. Oh, okay, that's not too bad. Isn't that just the 4? Actually, better off leaving it as the other way. Whatever you get. Two significant figures, 9. 1.90? Yeah, so it would be 1.9 units squared. No, yeah, but I think they did. Yeah, apparently they did. Yeah, because the fourth root of 32 will be about 2 point something. And then four fifths of that, that makes sense. Okay. 3.8. Looks like I'll be doing a video for homework. Um, 